Legacies, as you all know, or if you haven't heard, Legacies as of this next update, which will be next month on the 6th, I'm pretty sure Legacies, as in the explosive energy weapons, are going to no longer be a thing. Um, They're going to be removed, and I don't know, for any of you guys who are oldies or are kind of have an older culture or still use Facebook, social media, this is the largest Fallout 76 group. You'll find greatest admins and moderators, very safe group, very good group if you're looking for people to play with, whether it's on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, tips for the game, other kind of things. We're, we'd love to have you we do everything on there. You'll you'll find it to be a very safe and enjoyable environment in there if you use Facebook. Just pay attention. I'm going to go through the damage cards first, and then we'll proceed to maybe a couple survivability. So let's go to the perk menu. So for strength, if you're just starting off, your strength is not going to be any more than two. The main thing you need in here, well, um, assuming you're using like handmade fixer and you're really going traditional commando, you're not really using railway or anything, you might not need bandolier depending on how much ammo you're carrying. So if you, if you can have five, if you're at the point where you can have five strength and afford the rest of these at the end, then you can add a bandolier. But if I were you, have your strength actually starting at three and put blocker. Blocker is so vital, actually just as maybe even more vital than bandolier. This is a multiplicative damage reduction from melee attacks. This is super important. I know for bloodied commando builds, I know sneaking is boring. That's why a lot of people tend to not want to play this style because they don't like sneaking all the time. And this build can you can sneak, run around, you will not die, you will do so much damage, it's, it's, it's nutty. So, put on blocker, you know, ghouls, scorch beast, scorch beast queen, anything that melees you, it will do significantly less, probably won't even hurt you at all. The blocker. Next, perception. Everything you see in perception here, you need to copy and paste. Um, if you want to take a screenshot, go and take a screenshot, and maybe as I'm talking, if you want to edit it with like a little markup on your phone or whatever, you can circle the specific ones. Or refer back to the video, doesn't matter. Perception, you need to have a base of 15. Concentrated fire, you only need this at rank 1 now, just because of the way damage scales, the way they nerf concentrated fire. This is all you need, just so you can target the head. Headshots and vats, maybe the queen's wing when you want to cripple her and make her land, that is fine. For now, concentrated fire at rank 1, this is all you need. All that 2 and 3 star does is increase your damage up to a maximum of 2% for 2 star and 3% for 3 star. That is nothing. It is not a useful... Um... Not a useful thing to do, so just keep this at rank one, just so you can target different limbs. That's all we're going for. Master Commando, uh, Commando, Expert Commando. Obviously, you need these if you're using automatic. This is for automatic weapons. Um, obviously, if you're doing like Sneak Commando, uh, like the same thing, but you want to use riflemen, like rifles and whatnot, the build is the same, except you're just going to swap out Commando for the rifleman versions. That's it. And I'm going to do even more in-depth, I'm going to tell you guys that these are all additive. Uh, I don't know if any of you played pre-1 Wasteland update, but for those who haven't, additive, the, the game used to make make it so every perk you see here for damage, this was all multiplicative. So, let's say your base damage for a weapon in your Pip-Boy is 60, 20%, obviously it's 20% is 60, it would increase it by that much. And then let's just say the gun went up to like 72 damage or something like that. The next commando card you put on there would be 20% of that 72. And then the last commando card will be 20% of that last number. Just it's mul it multiplied. It, it, and it would come out to all these nerd rage multiplied to that higher number too. And it, it would just be crazy. And with bloodied being in here with adrenaline and all the mutations, it would just stack so high and your damage was massive. And they changed it all to additive. So... All these cards are just 20% of 60, 20% of 60 again, 20% of 60, or whatever your base damage is, okay? Still nonetheless, you put them on there. It's very good. Um, basically, 
I have a I have an uh, Prime Automatic on Fixer. I always suggest if you can afford it, put Prime receivers on. All right. Um, so yes, basically all the Commando cards you need: Concentrated Fire, Rank One, Ground Pounder. Now, because Additive is so small, if you want to make one of these Commando cards have one less rank and make Ground Pounder a Rank Three, so you can reload faster, fine. But there's really no use. Twenty percent is great. It's amazing. It's all you really need is Ground Pounder Rank Two for the accuracy. Well, you're not really going to be shooting without that, so you, the accuracy part doesn't matter. It's the um, reloading. Tank Killer. This is important. I see a lot of people running around in this game. With no tenderizer, no tank killer. Definitely, that's a mistake. Tank killer is very important because, especially after the one wasteland update. Oh, God. I have a gun, please. Got a gun. Okay. Sorry about that. But yeah. After one wasteland, with the massive damage reduction, or the massive reduction in damage that we got, the armor that enemies had, especially tougher ones like Scorch Beast, Grafton Monsters, Behemoths, the Queen, uh, Ghouls, and all those enemies that are tankier, the damage is even double reduced. So running tank killer is important if you want to have... A lot of that armor, that natural armor they have, if you want to reduce that, because reducing their armor makes your weapon do more damage. Which is always what you want. And uh, armor pierce in this game, uh, armor piercing perks and magazines are multiplicative. So they do stack and they do multiply with each other so that you can ignore almost all the enemy's armor so that you can do the most damage possible. On to endurance. For starters, I'm talking to starters here. The only thing you really want in here, if anything, is obviously uh, you want Radical. For sure you want Radical because you're obviously going to be bloodied. You want to have that little bit of extra carry weight because maybe your strength is not going to be up there. And you want to have a little bit of carry weight, sure, put on Radical. But or if you're just really wanting to go min-maxed, but you're not wanting to do bosses yet, and uh, you really want to just focus on your damage part, to be honest with you, Endurance isn't really something you need to focus on at all. So, matter of fact, don't even worry about Endurance for now, unless, I mean, you'll have one Endurance all the time, so just put on Radical, just so you have that extra carry weight for the time being. Charisma. It's very important. Strange in numbers. This is, if any of your teammates, whether you have one teammate, two, three, four, if any of them are mutated, all your mutations get a 25% increase to the uh, effectiveness, which is super huge for jumping higher, uh, adrenal reaction gives you more damage, while low health, uh, this is just super strong herd mentality. I'll get into the mutations in a little bit, but it just increases the strength of all your mutations and it's huge. You definitely want this on. Tenderizer. This is one of the only couple things in this game remaining that are multiplicative, right? This is the only remaining thing that's multiplicative other than legacies, but we're not going to talk about legacies, obviously. They're going to be removed. We don't need to talk about them. As far as legit game, in-game mechanics, Tenderizer is the one of very, very few things that is multiplicative. So whatever your maximum, whatever your end result damage output is, Tenderizer it gets that max ending value and multiplies it by 1.1. This is why this card is so strong, it's stronger than all of these cards combined. These are all just whatever your base damage is, it just adds whatever the percentage of your base damage is. This is whatever the end result of that is, multiply times 1.1. That's why this is super strong, it's important. If you're melee, melee ranged, everybody runs this card. If you're not running this card, you are severely doing less damage. It doesn't matter if you think you're fine, you're not fine, run Tenderizer, it is a must run. Nerd Rage, uh, obviously damage resist, AP regen, that's fine, but what we're really looking for here is that 20% damage, which again, now is additive, so it's 20% of whatever the base, which for my gun is 60, so it's just gonna give me plus 12. Um, so yeah, that's what we need. Anything damage related to put on, this is the only thing here for now, for starters, that you want is Nerd Rage. 
most of these cards like Tenderizer and Nerd Rage and stuff, uh, unfortunately you will not unlock them until like your level 30 to 40 ish. So there is a video on my channel where you can look up how to power level in like a day or two and crank out so many levels and be 100, 200, and you can do all of this very easily. So yes, Nerd Rage. That's the next important card. So so far we have Blocker, everything in Perception you see here, nothing in Endurance except Radical, Strange in Numbers, Tenderizer, Nerd Rage. Those are the only important ones so far. Agility. This is copy and paste. Right, Min Max, this is copy and paste. This category is also copy and paste. Escape Artists. Rat Scorpions, Mole Rats, they do exist and they will pop up out of the ground at your feet and get you detected. It is a broken mechanic in the game that I think should be removed. Even the devs know that this is put on their backlist for things that people have complained enough about. Are those rat scorpions and mole rats because they are breaking they they will they will always break as long as they are spawned in your area they will get you detected you won't escape the detection until you kill them so otherwise if there are none of that around or let's say you kill them when you want to get back into caution or you're just something got you in danger and you want to get back into caution sprint away from combat a little bit go back into sneak you'll have a brief invisibility uh cloak over you and you'll be back into caution in no time and you'll be sneaking in very important card, must run. This is all copy and paste under agility. Adrenaline. Yes, the max percentage here for uh, having max rank is 60%. It is additive, once again. Um, but this plus 30 damage that I'm going to be getting, or whatever you get based on your base damage, this is always good, especially if you're in events or things with mobs. This is good because once you hit that max percentage, any kill you get after that, keeps refreshing that maximum damage percentage for another 30 seconds, another 30 seconds, every time you get a kill. Super important to have this card on for damage. Super good. It's it's always been a must run in the agility category. Dodgy, I'll get to that in a second. Covert Operative. Um, recently, Covert Op and Sandman were actually kind of nerfed. Um, before the nerf, well, like a few months ago, uh, at night time, these would actually give you 3.75 times damage. Whereas they nerfed it, and we pretty much lost like 25% of the damage, which is it's kind of it's kind of, it's kind of a little bit of a big deal, but not super noticeable. I mean, I didn't really think it needed to be touched, but it is what it is. I don't I don't actually think it was intended. I think it was a bug in the way you ordered them. You had to order Sandman and Covert in a different order, but. Now you only get 3.5 at night, but still, nonetheless, that's a lot of damage. Covert Operative, Sandman, run them, doesn't matter what order you have them on, just slap them on there. This is required. Then your last point will be Gunfu Rank 1. This makes it so if you're fighting a boss, or you're in an event with a lot of enemies, and you don't want to keep spamming the VATS button, because... I don't know if it's a bug or a glitch, but without Gung Fu, it, turn, it, it seems to be like you'll be kicked out of VATS randomly so randomly and so often even before an enemy is dead the game will kick you out of that this card technically does more than it's supposed to just because the game doesn't work when you don't have it on when you put this card on when you're in bats the game will not kick you out of bats at all and the minute the second an enemy is you kill is you know the second you kill an enemy this perk swaps instantly over to the nearest enemy so on so forth, so if you're just aiming at heads and you're fasting all the enemies' heads, you can clear an entire event area in, like, seconds. It's, this, this, this perk is nuts. You must run this perk. This is all copy and paste and agility. Uh, dodgy. Yes, I know the action point drain is kind of like, oh, no, action point. But they did buff this card, even though they didn't change the description. If an enemy, no matter how many enemies are shooting you, Per enemy that hits you and drains your action points, that enemy has like a two to three second cooldown before they can continue to drain your action points again. But by the time that three second cooldown is up, as long as you have like company T and you can, you can look up guides on where to farm it, it's pretty easy to farm. Uh, or if you have AP refresh armor, by the time that three seconds is up, your AP already regen. Uh, and you're still taking damage reduction during the cooldown as well. So they really buffed this card. This is huge. This stacking with blocker, it does stack multiplicatively, so enemies that are meleeing you basically do no damage combined. 
ballistic gutsies, ranged enemies, it's really a huge damage reduction. If you have room for fireproof, another multiplicative damage reduction from explosions, you can basically be invincible if you're not already seeing that. So dodgy is a must run. Now, on to, <clears throat> on to luck. Base luck, it's gotta be 15. Um, better crits, just, uh, they buff this some months ago when, uh, they did a lot of stuff to crits. To crits. Um, 100% damage, which crits are gonna be literally the most vital part of this build and any shotgun build or bloody build. Crits are massive. Especially in PvP, because crits ignore damage reduction. It does not matter if someone has a full set of sentinel, or an enemy has X amount of damage reduction, a critical hit will completely ignore the damage reduction and do the base whatever output that you're doing plus whatever buffs you have on to buff it. This is so broken, it is so huge, because it ignores all the damage reduction from a target. Alright? You need this? Here, Raider. I have it on because I run bobbleheads and uh, magazines all the time, but this is not a must run. If you want to run something else, go ahead, go have at it. Um, it's up to you. Short Sheens, you're never going to take this. No matter what build you're running, melee, range, you're not taking this off. You, you don't want to lose mutations and you do not want to gain random ones. You want to keep a certain set of mutations. Um, so this is a must run. Critical Savvy. This perk mixed with a base of 33 luck, which you'll, you can see in your pit boy, which 33 luck is achieved by base luck at 15, full set of unyielding, doesn't have to be AP refresh, just a full set of five pieces of, eight, uh, of unyielding, that's three times five, that's another 15, you're getting 15, 15, that's 30, strange in numbers, uh, will give you, uh, you, you count as your own teammate actually, you count as your own teammate for the herd mentality mutation, and just for being your own teammate in a casual or public team, you get plus two to all your specials, so that's 32. Um, if you have strange numbers and someone's in your team, that obviously is going to boost by like another one or two points. But if you're not, if you're just by yourself, and you're not making use of strange numbers, and you want to get 33, all you got to do is wear an under armor that gives you plus one luck. And there's plenty of under armors that give you plus one luck. Point is, 33 luck, critical savvy will make it so that you can have... A crit ready and you can hit a critical shot every second shot that you hit out of your gun for every two bullets every two shots you shoot on an enemy is going to be a crit which is huge because crits ignore all damage reduction so this is so important especially for bosses so crit savvy 33 luck critical every second shot right good assault now this is kind of optional, if you, you're, you're going to realize that food buffs are actually so important and so powerful in this game, especially for Herbivore. Herbivore has very powerful, very powerful buffs, as I'll show you in a little bit. Um, if you have a refrigerator or a refrigerated backpack mod, I'm using grocers, but that's kind of like up to you. If you want to run a refrigerated backpack mod, or you have a refrigerator, you don't want to carry that much food around. You're not going to need this, you can swap this out for Bloody Mess, and for a Fixer, you'll probably get like 8 more damage, which is not really anything in the long run, but it's something. Or you can swap it for Serendipity or Grim Reapers. There's other options you can swap this out for. But if you're like me, and you like to carry a good amount on you, so you're not fast traveling back and forth and wasting game time, this is a good perk to have, and if you want to fight a boss, and you want to, like for me, when I fight the boss, I'll normally just swap this out for the boss fight, and put on something else, and then swap it right back. But if you're gonna do that, you gotta remember to put this pack on because I made the mistake in the past where all my food spoiled because I forgot to put it back on. Tormentor is a must run if you're, if you're fighting the queen. Even if you're in a public server, do not rely on randoms to have anything to cripple the queen. If you're running commando, run Tormentor, get her queen, get, get her wing knocked out so that she can land. If her wing is knocked out, she will land. Shooting her while she's flying around randomly is going to do nothing but probably stagger her. When you stagger her, she starts to behave even more weird and she'll fly away, start doing the piss attack, and you're screwed, wasting everybody's time in the lobby. So if you're going to shoot her, have Tormentor or um, uh, One Gun Army for Heavy Gunner. Shoot her wing, get it crippled so she can land. And she'll be crippled for a decent amount of time. Run this when you're running the queen. If you're not running the queen, you could swap this. If you're not running good with salt either, you can put 
Class Freak, uh, Class Freak if you want, Grim Reapers, you have a couple, so many other options. Quick Heads is good if you're not running a quad gun and you want a chance to have an instant reload, you can run that. But for now, the important cards here, uh, Critical Savvy, Starch Jeans, Better Criticals, okay? These are a must run in the luck category. Okay, Legendary Perks. My girlfriend's on a team with me, she'll be fighting the Queens, just so I can demonstrate this, um, how powerful this build is. Taking one for the team only actually works if you have at least one team actual team member. You don't count as your own team member. This is huge. These are two huge cards. This is a multiplicative 40%. So basically 1.4 times the max, the final damage output that you have. Tenderizer gives you 1.1 times on top of that. This gives you 1.4 times. This gives you another 1.4 times. This, however, follow through does not stack across all players. It only activates one at a time, no matter how many players have it on, no matter how many players are shooting. This only applies to you. This does not apply to when you shoot the enemy. This this won't. This is not a debuff. This will not apply to ever, anyone else in your uh, squad. This only applies once, and it only applies to you if you have the song. This, however, this if everybody. In the entire event, let's say the queen, the queen landing counts as an attack. So if everybody in the server, let's just say, we'll just reduce that. Let's just say there's four people in the queen's landing area and she lands and you're all in the landing radius. You'll obviously get that little indication that you got hit by the landing. If all four of you get hit by the landing, that's 1.4 times 1.4 times 1.4 times 1.4. Um, and I'll just do that real quickly. Just with this card alone, with her landing on four people, that is uh, that is a 284% increase to your total damage. Total is the same thing that Tenderizer does. It's your final damage output times the 1.1. So Tenderizer is a total damage increase. This, another total. 1.1 so times 1.4 times 1.4. Whoever gets hit by that enemy, it stacks across everybody. This is so huge. And you'll see, you'll see in the video... You'll we'll see when, uh, later on when we're fighting the queen, we'll both get in the landing area or get hit by her sonic yells. You'll see a massive damage output increase from this alone, and then with this included, with another 1.4. These are a must. If you're by yourself, though, you can take this off and swap it for intelligence card or something else that's, you know, fun, something else to use. But if you're in team most of the time, run this card. For sure, though, never take this follow-through off. This counts by yourself for you only, all right? Rest of these, endurance is questionable. If you never want this, you don't have to put it on. Um, but for now, strength, agility, luck, very much a must run. Actually, I'm gonna suggest endurance. Uh, endurance, uh, strength, agility, luck. So we talk about survivability. I'll get, kinda get on with it here. The rest of this stuff, once you get to this level, you have all these points to use legendary cards. I carry a bunch of chems for buffs for my boss fight because I am min-max. This is a min-max build. You don't need to use chems when you're not doing boss fights, but if you are wanting to run these boss fights as fast as possible, especially when legacies are gone, chems are going to be the way to further increase that. And I carry a lot and super stims on me because I don't carry around regular stims like a brokey. Um, so I put travel pharmacy on. You don't need that, but... If you want to invest in this for after you have everything else set that you need for damage, strong back, whatever you feel necessary that you want here. But the only important thing here is blocker. Endurance, if you want to do like me, the only other important things here that you would want to run after everything is done is fireproof for reduction from the queen's yells and other explosions, and revenant. People don't even know about this car still. It's crazy. And the people that kind of do are like, oh, I don't People don't really revive. I don't want to, you know, rely on other players to revive me for damage. You don't need to rely on other players. If you're doing a boss fight or some event and you want that extra damage, have uh, have even one piece of life saving. One piece of life saving, put it on, kill yourself, and you will pick yourself back up. This counts when you pick yourself back up too. So if you if that life saving procs and picks you back up, which it will, it's at least fifty percent. If you have a full set on, it's a 98% cap out. You will revive yourself and you'll have 50, a free 50% damage, which is additive for two minutes, All right? That is a gem. Uh, the rest of these here, uh, there's literally no room for other quality of life unless you're not running 
Thank you one for the team. I apologize this took so long. I really want to explain this because these YouTubers, other people, they don't really go into breakdowns. And this is mid-max build, and I want to make you guys have the best experience possible to build. All right. Armor. Full set of unyielding. I have full AP refresh. You don't need it if you have company T or other AP buffs on. Uh, but I have a full set of uh, unyielding AP. Uh, and then for the food buffs. Uh, as you can see here, oh, they're still active for a little bit. Company T gives you, but don't look at the number 25. The way it actually works in reality isn't a number or value. It's based on your max AP and it's a time reduction. The company T by itself, even if you have no AP refresh armor, this will refill your AP from zero to full in like two seconds. It's crazy. And Fuse Suit Flower T gives your max AP plus 50 and AP is, gives you longer VATS usage, more uses of all your AP. It's, it's crazy. Um... Steep Melon Blossom Chai gives you five more agility, which you're like, oh, why do you really need that extra agility? Each point of agility gives you t extra 10 AP. So technically, this is a loophole in stacking two buffs that actually do the same exact thing. So whereas if you, if you Sue Flower Tea is just directly giving us 50 AP, this Steep Melon Blossom Chai is giving us a, well, it might be, if you don't have strange numbers on, it might be a little lower, but as long as you have Herbivore on, You'll get at least 40 or 50 if you have uh, live and love free you'll get even more but this just gives you uh, an a instant boost direct boost to your AP uh, the chai gives you a indirect boost to the AP by boosting your agility which also will boost your AP in the end sweet mud fruit tea sweet mud fruit tea and bite soup do the same thing um, the only difference is that Sweet Mud Fruit Tea lasts for one hour and Blight Soup lasts for 30 minutes. It's up to you. They're both easy to actually make. Um, but yeah, there's that. Uh, mutations. Stranger Reaction gives you more weapon damage to lower your health. I think the max cap is 50%, but with Stranger Numbers, I think that goes up a little bit. I don't actually know. I need to ask the data miners what the actual number is, but yeah, it's at least 50%. Bird Bones. More agility, more AP, uh, it, it reduces your fall speed, which if you're having a jetpack, it makes you lighter in the air, less fall damage, etc. Uh, Eagle Eyes, very vital, they actually buffed this in the crit update. Uh, gives you a massive uh, increase to crit damage, which I'm getting 75% from it, which is huge. Uh, Egghead, you don't need that. So, so far, you need Adrenal Reaction, Bird Bones, Eagle Eyes. Egghead, don't even worry. Empath. Um, I'm only running this because I can afford serums, but my girlfriend actually has Empath on. Um, if you and one other teammate uh, are the only ones on your team, this is as far as I know how it works, um, with just one other person. I don't know if you add more people, if it doesn't cancel out anymore, but I know for sure if it's just you and one other person that have Empath. The team did right? The, the, the plus 33% damage that you're supposed to take on your own, which is very deadly, actually cancels out because you are making your team take negative 33 percent damage so they're taking a damage reduction so basically your teammates are having an extra dodgy an extra set of uh, an extra dodgy per card on with you having this and if your teammate has this in return as well it's also canceling the damage you're taking so basically it just cancels it out to where you know you're both taking uh you're not taking any more damage you're actually not taking any additional damage you're actually taking minus damage I don't know the full percentage, but I know you're actually only receiving a benefit. If you and a teammate have this on, you are only taking... You are only not taking damage, which is very good. So, you'll see that that just makes you super tanky. You don't have to run that, though. I wouldn't suggest running it, especially if you're not running or friends are running with randoms. You don't want to trust randoms to have this on. Because if you're running this and randoms don't have it, you're just going to be taking an extra 33% damage and you're going to be dying. So, don't run Empath if you don't have a teammate with it. Grounded, not important. Herbivore, vital. Okay, adrenal reaction, bird bones, eagle eyes. Um, herbivore, because you will be using food buffs that are very powerful. Herd mentality gives you plus, uh, it actually gives you plus two when grouped, which you count as your own teammate. But because I have strange in numbers and I have a teammate that's mutated, it's giving me plus three to all my specials instead of just plus two. But if you're by yourself on a public team, yes, you get plus two um, by yourself and you actually don't. Uh, the solo is when you're not in team setting, which you're always going to be in a team setting in this game, whether it's by yourself or with others. So you don't need to worry about that. Marsupial is kind of optional, but after running Marsupial since the launch of this game, jumping extra high is fun. I like it. It's very useful. Uh, Speed Demon, right? 
So we have Adrenal Reaction, Burn Bones, Eagle Eyes, Herbivore, and Speed Demon. This makes you reload faster, makes you move at the cap maxed speed. Um, and yeah, very good perk. Excellent. I need to retake my buffs, but uh, yeah, that is that. And I will now see you guys at the Queen. All right, we're back with the nick of time. Um, wow, we are just barely gonna make this fight before 6 a.m., which is good, because that that extra 3.5 damage only lasts between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. Um, if you guys notice here, those who don't know, you can actually go a little lower than this. You don't even have to be barely touching the Fisher Sight Prime for the Queen to spawn, and all this will still be a nuke flora all out here. Um, if you, if you just want to nuke the rest of this to get even further nuke flora, you can actually I'll do a different video or something, but you can kind of get it in the corner up here to where it's barely touching on the top. You can actually have this whole left field where the forest is to fight her. But for now, basically just do what I'm doing. You'll be fine. Fight the queen. You don't have to worry about people who hazmat suits and noobs dying everywhere, or you can just be a troll. It doesn't matter, but I'm just showing you guys where you can watch it. If you didn't know. All right, so we're gonna have to down ourselves, uh, but I won't need life-saving armor because my girlfriend is here pick me up and I'm here to pick her up uh, so we're gonna be using in this fight we'll be we'll be using quad 25 25 fixer for most of the fight and at the end of the fight when she's at a certain low 40% threshold after she's mutated the second time around um, you will see me bust out quickly the ex executioner's fixer because this is a multiplicative that stacks for all those other cards you saw. This stacks for a 50% multiple, a 1.5 multiplier when your target is below that third threshold. Why is she using this little camp? <laughs> where's the tank? Baby, where's the tank, man? Oh my god. Oh, there's distractions over there, that's great. Let's see how much damage I can take. Okay, that's fine. Okay, take... Uh, you can actually do it in this order and you can have it all active. It's overdrive. Psych attacks, it stacks like that. And let's block. Okay, pick me up. Alright. I have 50% more damage. I'm gonna drink Toxic Goo to get me back down into Nerd Rage. Take this out. Left arm. I need someone's left arm. Uh, she needs to really relax on that trigger, man. Okay. Time. Oh, the queen, bro. Okay, that's 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 great. We just got adrenaline here. Ah, uh, you know this game really likes to. Oh, did I did I cripple her? No, I did that. I'm gonna let her attack me so you guys can see a massive damage output. Come on. There you go, that counts. That's a big count. That's huge, 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 huge! <laughs> Ooh, that's huge! Cripple, 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 cripple. Tormentor rank 3 doesn't want to work. Nice, bro, nice. I'm gonna shoot her. I'm just gonna shoot her. That's fine. I'm just gonna shoot her. I don't care. I don't care. Die, die, die. There it is. K, 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 land on me, land on me. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. That's huge, you did a thousand damage? Oh, 600 to a thousand. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, 
Oh, that's crazy damage, folks. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna just record that. Do over Socrats, bro. Dude. This one's good. That's crazy, yo. Oh my gosh. We were at 181. We probably had more, but some things probably wore off. But that's crazy. Let's see if I can make this scorch piece. Let's see how much I can do on it. I believe she did get hit. She ended up getting hit the second last round, so that 400 was just a quad fixer. <laughs> oh, that was huge. The multiplayers of this game are crazy. I wasn't able to get it off in time because she staggered me and I reloaded, but with the executioners, if you briefly saw, I was hitting like 700, almost 800 for a base shot, and every other shot was like over a thousand. She, she was getting drained the whole time. Like, you don't need legacies. This is a fun build to use. If you like min-maxing and you want to kill things fast and you don't want a legacy, you want to do it legit, this is literally just as fast as legacies. Le legacies just have that area of effect, sure. But with Gung Fu and headshots, you'll be one-tapping everything. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Put it up one more time. Blocker. Everything in Perception. Radical. Change in Numbers, Tenderizer, Nerd Rage. Everything you see in Agility. Better crits, starch genes, critical savvy, um, and yeah. Those are the must runs for the beginner statistician. And your legendary priority, your first legendary priority is follow through because if you multiply it, this is your other priority is this perk right here. After you've gotten these things done, you know, then start with luck, agility, strength, endurance, so on and so forth. And when you have all this done and all the other perk cards are maxed, you want to add on your own quality of life depending on what you like to do when you're not boss fighting so be it you can do whatever you want endurance or you can run a charisma card and run you know you're running xp you can run an xp build for intelligence charisma whatever but for now um those are the main things you need for damage first and priority even if you're a high level and you want to actually know what a build is you probably have a lot of perk points saved up just do the ones i set first and then you can so on and so forth Appreciate you guys. Sorry for the long intro, but nobody else out here is going to explain a build like I am. Um, this is a lot of work of me talking to data miners over a year or so and getting information and how things calculate in this game. There's actually more to it. It's an armor piercing equation. It's the way this game does armor piercing. Whole nine yards, which is another thing. Uh, Perforating magazine. Uh, prime automatic and perforating. Perforating. Uh, ignores for an extra 40%. So just like tank killers 36%, this is an extra 40% multiplied on that, getting a massive, massive armor reduction on the, on the enemy. So you're boosting your damage so far. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, that is that. Uh, just data miners helping me and just all of the information I've gathered just to make sure I know how everything works so I can break it down. This is all synergy, the way damage works and probability. It's all synergy, if you can't tell. This is all just synergy build it's not i wouldn't say common sense because the game doesn't actually tell you how to do any of this you're just gonna have to figure it out over time and trials but i've already done all that for you um a couple other youtubers have but no one's going to explain this build like i can uh, but yeah there you go hope you enjoyed and you guys have a good one any questions you need feel free to ask and yeah get y'all in the next one